Alright guys, welcome back to Your Dry Delight, that awesome, awesome visual novel game with the kick-ass soundtrack and the awkward romances. So after some debate with me, I decided that I'm just going to skip over the dialogue we've already read so we can just get into like the other half of the story, which is the Meyer route, because we already did Leslie, so now I gotta do Myers. So I'm just gonna skip around, because there's no reason to like um continue it after the choices. I mean, you know, because we've already seen most of the dialogue, so any new dialogue I'll read, but all the old dialogue I won't. Alright, here we go. We're gonna just fast forward to the first choice. And he's basically just saying, I worry about you, and I'm gonna just be like, I worry about you too. This guy. Doesn't he realize it goes both ways? With a small sigh, I rub the back of my neck with a hand, unsure how to phrase what I want to say. I worry about you too, Leslie. Not like I can help it, since you send yourself on sketchy jobs all the time. It's like you're just looking to be iced. Okay, so we've read this before, so yeah, we're just like telling our amazing, crazy boss, like, dude, we worry about you too, because like we're close, and if anything happened to you, I would probably kill everyone in this room, and then me. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. All right, well, we're just gonna fast forward. Uh, swallow it. Yeah, we'll swallow it. <laughs> He's just like, this is awful. Uh, I just want to see what happens after the things we've already read, because we've read, like, a lot of stuff. So, is there any better stuff? I don't remember if we've read this one before, because I've played, like, four videos and some of the dialogue. I can't remember if we've actually touched. I can manage another drink, but not another of whatever this is. I jerk my chin towards the mild rat poison in my glass. You don't like it, really? I've been told it's one of the best drinks here. One or two more and I promise it'll start growing on you. That's how any drink works. <laughs> no, really. I like my tongue too much to put it through more of Satan's mouthwash. So yeah, we've read this. And then Meyer's like, ooh, I'll take care of your tongue. And it's like, ah! <laughs> My dry comment makes a stranger chuckle, and he flashes me a wink. Oh, so that's the problem. Well, never fear. I'll take good care of that tongue of yours. Yeah, he's being like this big flirt, and like, Richter's like, what? <laughs> What's that supposed to? Bartender, a fresh drink for the delicate tongue gentleman. And the usual for myself. See, I think he gets like coffee or something and not alcohol, and we've read this before. And he's gonna ask us, well, what kind of stuff do you like? Oh yeah, and he calls us, he asks us if we're a pimp or whatever, and like, Richter's like, excuse me? And he's like, no, I'm just kidding. Poor Richter. Okay, so whiskey. He's like, well, I don't know, what do you like then? He's like, and I'll be like, whiskey, and he's like, oh, really? <laughs> whiskey, of course. Do I look like a guy who drank anything else? You didn't seem to have much trouble with the other drinks you enjoyed tonight. That's because you were distracting me. Really? Am I that captivating? You're practically holding me captive from the start, so yes? Hmm. He lets out a low chuckle, shaking his head. There's something charming about his laugh. Maybe the way it comes from deep in his chest. Gentle but resonant. Whiskey it is, then. And only the best kind, as a minch deserves. Yiddish term that literally means man, but can be used to refer to women as well. It is a compliment used to describe someone who is honorable and compassionate. I hope I said that right. I hope. <laughs> I'll make sure to take excellent care of both you and your refined palate. You're acting like I've already made up my... You're leaving? Meyer sips the last of his coffee and pushes it away, smoothing his hair back with one hand. I'm afraid so, Jack. I've got some business to attend to, but I do hope I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, so he's like, I hope I see you here next time, and I'm like, no. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Alright, I think we've read this one, so we'll fast forward to the next choice. Yeah, Leslie came in with that cake he wanted, because, like, dude was like, I want cake. <laughs> uh, and he seemed important. I think he's important. Yeah, we're telling Leslie about Meyer. Maybe a spy, maybe an assassin, not sure. Important, hmm. Why do you think he was talking to you? Beats me, maybe he just wanted a drinking partner. Leslie drums his fingers on his desk, frowning thoughtfully. He didn't see through your cover? Sure didn't act like it if he did, and I'm still alive, right? Fair point, maybe your lying skills really have improved. 
His chair squeaks as he leans back, propping his feet up on the desk. And I just cleaned the mud off it yesterday, too. So he's important, maybe part of the mafia, but he didn't bump you off. Bump you off means kill, which I think we've seen that before, so that's what it means. What do you plan to do about him? I was getting to that. Oh, I'm listening. He gestures for me to continue. Meyer offered me a deal for information. A deal? You're serious? I nod, barely resisting the urge to rub my forehead. Details on the mom in exchange for... For... This is so ridiculous, I can barely say it out loud. In exchange for a cake. <laughs> Leslie's like, are you serious? <laughs> oh, come off it, Richter. Tell me what he really wanted. I know you're trying to get revenge for me teasing you, but I'm being serious, boss. He wanted a cake. Pointing at the paper bag that holds Leslie's half-eaten breakfast, I put on the straightest face I can manage. It's from the neighborhood around Little Italy, right? Obviously that place is owned by the Italian gang, so we can't get too close. But as for why he wants one? I've got no clue, boss. Maybe a kid at home who likes him? Sweet tooth? Forbidden fruit? It reeks of a setup, Richter. Isn't that obvious? Leslie wrinkles his nose, about the reaction I'd expected, and really not an unfair one. I thought about that, believe me. But if it was a setup, why would he invite me back? Wouldn't it have been easier to get rid of me right there? Well, we all know that fucking Meyer is a genius, for some reason. And he could have made his offer sound more serious, too. Anyone with half a brain would be suspicious. That's true, I suppose. I still don't like it, though. Not one bit. He lets out a heavy sigh, sticking a hand into the bag with his cake and tearing off a piece to idly munch on. Well, while you're having that time of your life last night, I was chatting with Mr. FBI. Apparently one of the city's politicians is hosting a big, big party at a hotel tonight. Thanks to our contact, I've got his passes inside. Because you know what's going to be at that party, my dear Richter. A lot of liquor? A hell of a lot of liquor. Probably provided by the main source in Cleveland. Leslie and I exchange knowing looks. I can already see what he's getting at. I just want to see if we still go to the party or if we do something different. So that's why I'm not skipping this area. So you want to scope it out for information? It's a good bet and a safe one. Once folks get drunk, there's no telling what kind of juicy information we'll get out of them. If we're lucky, some of it might even be related to our case. I wouldn't count on it. We snicker. In our line of work, both of us have seen our fair share of these ritzy orgies. I think you should come to the party with me tonight. With your smarts and my good looks, we're bound to find something out. And if you want my honest opinion. Leslie goes thoughtfully silent for a moment, then, and a more serious look darkens his brow. I think this rendezvous with the speak is too risky. Even if Meyer doesn't mean you any harm, any other mob types around there might not feel the same way. But I also don't think you're green enough to walk into a death trap. Gee, thanks, boss. When I roll my eyes, Leslie offers me a soft, affectionate smile, the kind he only puts on once in a blue moon. I'm heading to the party either way, but I trust your judgment, Richter. You can decide for yourself where to go tonight. What'll it be? As much as I hate to disappoint Leslie, my instincts are telling me. The speakeasy is worth a gamble. Okay, so it does change. It's a risk, no doubt about it, but one I feel I have to take. Shifting out of my chair, I approach Leslie's desk and lean over it, giving him a firm look to show my conviction. Sorry, boss. I'm gonna try my luck with Meyer. There's a lead there. I, I just know it. Oh, he looks so disappointed. <laughs> like I expected, Leslie doesn't look too thrilled by my choice. But true to his word, he soon lets out a good-natured sigh. Heartlessly leaving your partner in the dust. So this is what it's come to, eh? Hmm, fine. I'll just enjoy the free party food by myself. Not even going to bring me back a sandwich? Ask your new friend for one. <laughs> Leslie huffs and I snicker at his playful sulkiness, although I have to wonder if a little bit of it isn't genuine. All right, all right. But if you go, promise me you'll station a few officers near the speakeasy, just in case something goes wrong. You never know when trouble might pop up. Yeah, that's fair. I'll make the calls this morning. Good boy. One second, guys. Then I won't wor well, I'll worry less about you. He reaches out to ruffle my hair. Luckily, it was already messy, so he can't inflict much more damage. Now let's cannonball into the that stack of paperwork. Been looking forward to it all morning. <laughs> sure. We spend the rest of the day going through reports, most of them related to Italian gang activity on the east side. It doesn't exactly put me at ease for when I leave the office, heading towards Little Italy to pick up Meyer's cake. 
I keep picturing his face, and my mind wonders to how he might react when I hand this to him. Will it really make him happy? Aside from those distracting thoughts, though, my bakery trip is an uneventful one. Prize cargo in hand, I end up at the speakeasy just as night settles in. Welcome, sir. Please enjoy your night. Oh, maybe that's what I heard. It's a trash truck coming and picking up the, the trash cans and setting them down. The doorman gives his customary greeting, and I casually nod while stepping past. Here I am, a detective on a risky job, shuffling into a speakeasy with a cake and a paper bag like some kid holding on to his school lunch. Not my finest moment. The place is packed full just like last night, which means I can't really pick Meyer out easily. I guess if I hang around the bar long enough, maybe he'll show up. Oh, it's Mr. Jack. <gasps> Gasp! It's the guy I was probably looking for. Oh, it's not. Okay. <laughs> a coarse voice, different from Myers, growls out behind me. Oh, it's, it's, it's the other guy. I turned to see one of the rough-looking men I'd noticed last night, staring at me suspiciously. I'm gonna pat you down, make sure you aren't healed. Understand? He must mean holding. Like, a weapon. Let's find out. Yep. Killed refers to being armed, usually with a gun. Like packing heat would refer to later on. The earliest usage was around 1866. Sweet. What? Well, no one did this to me last night. What's the big idea? Would you shut up? I'm not here to answer questions. Before I have a chance to protest further, he grabs me and starts patting my pockets, roughly feeling around. Sorry, buddy. I'm going to be taking this for tonight. The man pulls out the piece I'd been carrying as insurance, just in case things went south. And a piece is a gun. We know that. Well, now I feel even more like a defenseless kid. Great. Just don't pull any dumb moves and you'll be fine. Uh, I only pull dumb moves. I like to keep things real cordial around here. Got it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Good. Then we'll be heading to the back room. Uh-huh, whatever you... Wait, the back room? Wait, where are you taking me? Wait! <laughs> The man suddenly grabs my wrist, pulling me along the speak's perimeter. My heart starts to pound in my chest. What am I getting dragged into? I told the officers not to get close to the place unless I was gone for a while, but who knows what will happen in the meantime. My semi-captor takes me to the back of the parlor and down a long, dark corridor. The music and laughter fade slowly into the distance, replaced by only the sound of our footsteps. Finally, we reach a large black door, and the man knocks firmly on it several times. Come in. I thought your friend was going to murder me. The door opens into a warmly lit, spacious parlor. Not exactly the scary dank room I'd been expecting. <laughs> Rick just like, fuck. And there in the middle of a lush couch sits a familiar tall man. Mr. Eastman, your friend's here. Yes, I can see that. Thank you for bringing him in. Make sure no one intrudes on us if you'd be so kind. Yes, sir. Why do I feel like Leslie's going to show up with like a shit ton of cops? <laughs> With a polite nod, the other man departs, closing the door behind him with a soft click. Once he's gone, Meyer and I stare at each other for a few seconds in silence. I can only think that this dramatic reintroduction was deliberate. He knows I can read the subtext. Well, I brought your cake. I lift the bag in my hand and shake it a little, laughing nervously. Ah, oh, I knew I could count on you. A pleased smile slowly spreads over his lips, and the sight makes me relax a little. He pats the couch beside him, and I don't exactly feel like I'm in a position to refuse. I mean, you could run out, but you're probably going to run into that guy. The dude with the fucking angst hair. I approach and tentatively lower myself down, sinking into the soft cushions. Why, you're as stiff as a sheet of glass. What's wrong, Jack? Your secretary back there wasn't exactly the most gentle of fellas. <laughs> I apologize. They're used to dealing with coarser individuals than yourself, you see, and I forgot to tell them to use kid gloves. That means to be nice slash gentle. To use kid gloves with something or someone means to treat it delicately or carefully. The term refers to gloves made from kid leather. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. The skin from a young goat, which is extraordinarily soft and smooth. <laughs> kid leather. It's like, okay. <laughs> it's not that I just... It's not that. It's just I wasn't expecting all of this. All of this? You mean a nice back room and a speakeasy? Meyer gives me a faux innocent look. Right, that's obviously what I was referring to. Anyway, here, your prize. I hope it didn't get smushed when your lackey was jostling me around. I offer Meyer the bag with the cake, and his eyes light up when he takes it from my hands. Wonderful, I can smell it already. Mmm, cake. I don't know how to say this, so I'm just gonna butcher it. Is it 
Sischlet zu essen fremden Brett? Maybe? A Yiddish phrase that translates as it is hard to eat a stranger's bread. Purportedly used by Jews in St. Louis, Missouri as of 1920. My rabbi used to say, but I like to pretend it doesn't apply to cakes. He gazes longingly at the bag for a moment and sets it to one side. A smile finds its way onto my lips before I even realize it. The way he likes sweets so much really reminds me of Leslie. Oh, before I forget, I have something for you, Jack. Meyer leans around the edge of the sofa, grunting softly before straightening back up with a bottle in hand. Old Forster Kentucky Whiskey, the label reads. You remembered? I have an excellent memory, especially when it comes to people who catch my interest. Uh-oh. He takes a glass from the table beside him and starts to pour me a drink, humming softly. I notice that he's already got a half-empty cup of coffee for himself. Black as a night. Oh, man after my own heart. Black coffee. I have some right now, actually. I'm going to take a sip because my throat's starting to get dry. This is a quality product right here. I promise there's no Ed involved. Meyer hands me the glass, letting his fingers brush against mine for a moment longer than necessary. Ah, thanks. You're quite the host. You expected anything less? Well, I mean, you're, you know. He turns a little bit on the sofa, propping one elbow against the back so he can gaze at me head on. Feeling slightly embarrassed under his stare, I take a curious sip of the drink. Damn, it goes down so easy. Good enough that I can see why you're not serving it out there. Hmm. A man has to make a living, unfortunately. Buying and transporting high-quality goods is expensive, not to mention risky. I'd much prefer to serve good liquor over the common swill, but it's not quite feasible yet. He pauses for a thoughtful moment, though his eyes flick back to my face soon after. Well, about that information I owe you, assuming you're still interested in work. As I nurse my drink, Meyer begins to describe the main Mafia figures in the city, along with the various rackets they keep, in great detail. Combined with everything else I've seen tonight, I think it confirms my suspicions. He's near the top of the underworld food chain in Cleveland. He's not even trying to hide it. In fact, I think he's just playing a game with me, seeing how far we can take this before one of us has to state the obvious. Knowing that, you would think I'd be incredibly uncomfortable right now, but for whatever reason, being around Meyer puts me completely at ease. Maybe it's his disarming casual mannerisms, or the soft and smooth way he speaks. There's nothing aggressive or thug-like about him. He's perfectly composed. Occasionally, he shifts on the sofa beside me, brushing my leg with his own in a way that can't possibly be an accident. I can't tell what's going on behind his twinkling green eyes, but there's something playfully devious about the glances he keeps giving me. And I think that would make our trade just about even, no? He finishes his thorough description with an impish wink, taking a sip of his coffee. You sure are familiar with all the gang activity here, aren't you? If I didn't know better, I'd almost think you controlled some of it yourself. Me? Why, I'm not sure what would lead you to such an outrageous conclusion. Instead of looking offended, though, Meyer presses in a little closer, his smirk suddenly growing mischievous. After all, it's rather rash to assume things about people you don't know particularly well. Don't you agree, Richter? Uh, my name is Jack? <laughs> Who's this Richter? What? <laughs> no, Richter's my twin brother. How do you... He smugly lifts the cake bag, rustling it before my face. Your name is on the label. A mistake I wouldn't expect from you, if you'll pardon my rudeness. Were you distracted at the time you purchased it? I... Richter's my middle name. Jack Richter. Richter's my last name. <laughs> I'm not about to mention how I was daydreaming about him when I bought the cake. I think I'd rather just let my professional pride take the fall. Of course I know you're a detective, too, and I can guess why you're here. But please, don't take it as a blow to your acting skills. I'm just well acquainted with a number of professional liars, you see. If you already know so much about me, why are you pouring me drinks rather than having me shot and dumped in the alley? Meyer clicks his tongue, lightly wagging a finger at me. Violence is not how I prefer to do business, Richter. It's only ever a temporary solution. Violence begets violence, which is why you have warring Italian crime families rather than one consolidated powerful body. No, in most circumstances, I would much rather make friends than enemies. Friends like you, which is why you're not being dumped in an alley. Although I would never harm a... Shanya Punim? Is that what that means? The Yiddish phrase literally means pretty face. Okay. That's just... Don't... Leslie's prettier. Alright. Just gonna lay it out there. No matter what my moral code was. He shifts on the sofa again, this time letting his legs stay resting against my own. I swallow relieved at Meyer's explanation, but acutely aware of his face being a mere few inches to my right. You certainly aren't like any other guy I've met, law-abiding or otherwise. 
Why don't you tell me more about what it's like being in this, this risky business? I clumsily attempt to slide the conversation in another direction and my ass down the couch because he's getting too close. <laughs> Daring to glance over at Meyer. No, no, please. I know a one-sided agreement when I see one. With the gloating air of someone who's just caught their opponent cheating, Meyer shakes his head. I'll answer a few questions of yours, but only on the condition I can ask questions of my own. I swear on my honor to answer with the truth, and you'll do the same, but we can each avoid one, que each avoid one question in exchange for a favor. Does that strike you as fair? His tone casually rises up at the end, not so subtly daring me to accept. I think I'd be an idiot to expect a businessman like yourself to play fair, but all right, I'll bite. That's what I like to hear. Meyer gives me a rackish, teasing grin, all too pleased with my reply. As a gesture of goodwill, I'll even let you start. Really? How do you make any money with that kind of generosity? Oh, you'd be surprised. As Meyer chuckles to himself, I pause and ponder on just what to ask. What do I most want to know about? Oh, uh, let's do his history. I think it'd be nice to know more about Mr. Fucking. I planned around your plans. Tell me about your background, your history. What was it like for you growing up? My question seems to catch Meyer off guard. But his surprise quickly shifts into a gentle, pleased expression, and he nods in acknowledgement. I was raised in a cozy little Jewish community in Missouri, where I lived until a few years ago. I'm sure you'll find this hard to believe, but I always kept to myself as a boy. I rarely spoke to anyone. I suppose you could say I was afraid of rejection. A rabbi was my closest friend. We ate corned beef sandwiches and talked about baseball on the weekends. Looking back now, I think he was just as lonely as I. He chuckled softly, gaze flicking down to the coffee table and lingering on his cup. I can't imagine Meyer ever being withdrawn. I guess he didn't develop his charisma until later. Several days after my bar mitzvah, a few boys who I'd never seen before approached me on the street. Bar mitzvah, literally son of the commandment in Aramaic, is a Jewish ceremony often held for boys when they reach 13 years of age. Beyond serving as a coming-of-age ritual, it also marks the time a Jewish boy is obligated to uphold the commandments. The first bat mitzvah, the equivalent ceremony for girls, was held on March 18, 1922 for Judith Kaplan, the daughter of the founder of Reconstructionist Judaism. Meyer, they said, you're a tall, strong guy. Why the hell are you playing with a rabbi instead of making money? I realized I didn't have much of an answer. We formed a, little mer uh, formed a merry little crew. It was enjoyable to have that kind of attention from my peers, and my desire to fit in was why I began doing jobs with them. Eventually, my name garnered a certain reputation. The association grew, people started looking up to me, and somehow I ended up on top of it all. Meyer's eyes returned to me. I can't really read the true emotion behind them. Nostalgia, regret, or satisfaction. The rabbi, you know whatever happened to him? We don't speak anymore. He gives me one of those brief, thin-lipped smiles, the kind only you only show to be polite. Again, it's hard to see through what it means, but I can detect a little longing in his voice. You know, I'd always separated mobsters from real people in my head, like you were all just monsters who'd lost your humanity. But listening to you talk, I guess it makes me realize how we're not so different after all. I twirl my glass between my fingers, unsure if that knowledge makes me more happy or grim. Meyer studies me in silence for a little while. It's not an awkward silence, though, just a thoughtful one. Well, your turn. For a question, you have one? Oh, I have many. When the silence finally breaks, Meyer gives me a wry grin, his eyes momentarily flicking down to my mouth. Yeah, I'm listening. All right, what's your greatest fear? Dude. It's like not having my coffee in the morning. <laughs> I feel like that would be Richter's. My greatest fear? He nods, watching me expectantly. No immediate answer pops into my head, so I mull over the question for a moment. My greatest fear, something that would keep me from sleeping at night. Hurting innocent people. Oh. I nod, forcing a brief awkward smile as I take another sip of my drink. Meyer doesn't add anything further though. Is he waiting for me to elaborate? I just think it's my duty, well, the duty of everyone in law enforcement to make sure Americans are safe and happy. That's why we exist. It's not just a job you do for money. It's a job that lets you go home feeling better about the world, even if it's just a little bit. Meyer tilts his head a little to one side, eyes glimmering at me. Then his hand slips onto my shoulder, resting there gently for a few seconds before squeezing it. Very admirable, Richter. Although I have to wonder just where Volstead fits into that. 
He trails off curiously. Is he trying to lead me somewhere with that vague comment? Well, it's your turn, isn't it? Why don't you ask me something lighthearted? Uh, what is the square root of 50? <laughs> I don't mind if you get more personal. He leans in a little more, hands still lingering on my shoulder. Like, just like personal, like, like what's your favorite dog? Or <laughs> I can smell his light cologne and the subtle earthy scent of coffee. I've been trying desperately to keep my nerves under control, but it's getting harder and harder the more Meyer teases into my personal space. Uh, um, mm, mm, ask what his favorite activity. These are both interesting. Let's do activity. Well, what's your favorite thing to do? Favorite hobby? Favorite activity? I'm sure you don't just sit around here and drink coffee all day, right? And if I did, would there be something wrong with that? Well, no, I just meant... I know. In fact, I think I know what you mean better than you do. <laughs> Rick just like, fuck you. He shamelessly meets my indignant stare, and I don't doubt he's enjoying every moment of it. It depends. What does? My favorite activity. It depends on whom I happen to be with. Shall I let you figure out the rest, or would you like me to spell it out for you more explicitly? I think I get the idea. Thanks. Your turn. Go on. Pausing, Meyer makes a show of tapping a finger against his bottom lip, turning his eyes towards the ceiling. Okay, we're going to save it here, and we're going to stop here. I know you guys are going to be like, but, uh, but, no. <laughs> so, yeah. This is getting fucking, hey, it's Friday the 13th today. Happy Friday the 13th, everyone. <laughs> okay, we're going to stop here. Uh, but, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Meyer's story is actually, um, it's pretty adorable. But, yeah, he's very aggressive. It's, it's great. I love it. <laughs> I just kind of hope that Leslie does show up with like 50 cops like, get off my man. <laughs> it's probably not going to happen, but it says that the two stories meet together. So I'm guessing that I have to replay, like I play here on Meyer's side. I've already done Leslie's. And then I go back through a third time. I guess we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm really loving this game. It's fucking adorable. Leslie's still my favorite. Uh, Richter's my second favorite, and Meyer's my third favorite. Well, I guess he's kind of a tie with, with Richter, because, I don't know, I, there's just something about Leslie. I adore him. He's just the sweetest, most adorable fucking person ever in a game. So, yeah. But I hope that you guys did enjoy. Thank you all very much for coming in and watching. Um, if you have any suggestions, or if you have any questions, or if you just want to talk about the game, or you just want to talk about life, feel free to talk about that in the comments, and I will answer you as quickly as I can because I love all of you very much and I appreciate you all with every little tiny bitty ounce of my heart and soul. So yeah, love you guys. See you next time. Bye!